Bang! Neves Knives, I'm Jared, and today we are checking out a whole bunch of knives, about nine of them all together, uh, that are really awesome. They're really awesome knives, I really like them uh, quite a bit, but there's just one little detail about them that I'm going to nitpick about, but regardless, so they are all good or great knives. Um, now this one is the Concept Fenrir, and it is a Sparrow Knives design, they... Um, they also have their own knives, but this is their design collaboration with Concept. S35 VN blade steel, and it has a reverse bolster lock. Now, the idea behind this is it's a crossover. So, meaning it's like a, it's a crossover between tactical and EDC, which I appreciate. I like it quite a bit, and I can totally see and feel where they went with it or you know what they were going for because the way the ergos work on it it is mega 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 comfortable if you just look at the way my fingers lay on the handle and then the way how this fits right nestled into the crook of my hand my thumb goes right into there it is so comfortable then you can flip it around get it in the reverse grip it's also extremely extremely comfortable it, you know it has that it's equally as comfortable either way um but for edc i mean you have a blade shape that is going to be good for utility cuts. Um, you're going to be able to do good pinch grips. You can you can get up nice and tight to the edge if you really needed to do a reverse. You know, if you need to cut some ropes or something. Going forward, you can get up nice and tight to the edge for push cuts because you know you have this harpoon style drop point blade. Decent geometry, full flat grind. And um, it does get down pretty thin behind the edge. Now, the access to the lock bar is really, really good. Very comfortable. It does have a premium quality feel to it. It does have a steel lock bar insert in there. The clip um, is a titanium milled pocket clip, and it works good. And the reverse bolster lock makes it to where if you're right or left-handed, you'll be able to... You won't lock yourself out if you put pressure because you won't be putting pressure on the lock bar. And it has a cool look to it. Now, my issue. Um, it's it's very small and it's kind of dumb. So this has a... Fr well, it's not dumb. Let me be clear. It's important. I, I think that... Just because you can do something doesn't mean you should. And if you if you are going to do it, do it right. That's all I'm that's all I'm trying to say. So the jimping on the front flipper. The front flipper works good. However, the jimping is the worst kind of jimping you can put on a front flipper. It's slippery jimping, like literally slippery jimping. I wouldn't want this on the spine or on a front flipper. And if it wouldn't even work on the spine of a knife, it's definitely not going to be good for a front flipper. Then they don't bring it up all the way around. So it's slippery if you put your finger all the way up at the top. However, because they poke it up so high, you can get it down low and it's pretty easy to use. But if they would have just put jimping like on the Migaron here, this knife is an S90V and it has a dual grind on the S90V. This is the Migaron Karaki. And this has some of the best front flipping action I've ever seen. Let's take a look at the jimping. You can see the jimping is done exactly how jimping should be done. The detent is perfectly tuned for the front flipper. I can sit here, I can deploy this faster than um, I can with some regular flippers because it's done well. Doesn't matter how I'm holding the knife, I can easily deploy it. And I really like this knife. It's super duper light, lots of milling on the inside. I mean, it is very light and it has a cool look to it. Good access to the lock bar, false shut action, extremely smooth. But great example of how a front flipper should be done. Now, the front flipper shape is just fine if the jimping was just a little bit sharper. My detent also is a little strong for a front flipper. Now, for the thumb studs, it works great because, you know, you, you kind of like a nice stout uh, detent when you thumb flick. But the, the, the thumb studs could be a little sharper as well. They are a little bit smooth. Now, here I'm going to bring up another knife. 
This is the Tucson TS301. I haven't talked about it in a while. This is such an amazing knife. I love this knife. Not my favorite blade shape, but damn it, is it a good knife. The thumb studs are perfectly well done. Look at how they're, they're coned and they're sharp. Like, listen. Hear that? Now, this one is round. They're rounded. They're rounded. So, you don't get that that same effect when you put your thumb up to it and it grips your thumb back. Complete falsehood action. We have, it's a frame lock, but it has the, the scales overlaying the, the frame. So it acts like a liner lock. He has a steel lock bar insert. It is titanium, micarta, and carbon fiber. Um, ceramic caged bearings on a track. Amazing, amazing action. The thumb studs are the stop pin. So it has a lot of stability and comfort is insane. But it's a great example of the, the type of traction I'm talking about on a thumb stud that would have been so much better on this. But like I said, I still love this knife. It works great. Um, it's just, man, you know, that, that little tiny bit of nitpicking, uh, if it was just done that little bit, man, this thing would be exceptional. But it all, don't get me wrong though. I absolutely love it, and I do recommend it, especially for somebody looking for a good EDC that also can be used as a tactical knife or a self-defense knife. Next. Now, the next one I don't have here. I did make a video on it, but it was, it's was it been... It's lost. It's gone. So there is no bringing it back. However, I do have a first impressions on it that I'm going to put a card up here in the corner if you want to watch it. This is a pre-order that just opened up for the Null Knives Voodoo. One of the most badass knives I've tried this year. I'm not exaggerating. I absolutely, absolutely loved it. The ergonomics, the grind, the uh, the usefulness, the, the build quality. It's amazing. And it's different. It's not something, you know, it does stand out. You know, it doesn't look like the same old, same old. Um, and, you know, the ergonomics are hand melting. It has They have uh, multiple different versions. I think up to five different versions you can pick from. But the pre-order has opened up for that. So if you do want to maybe get in on that pre-order, um, I'm going to link as much as I can from this video down in the description for you guys. But it is definitely one to check out. And it absolutely impressed me. Next is the CMB Zetsu. Here is the name, you can see right there, the Zetsu M390 Steel Clip Point, trailing clip point blade, but if you look at how low it gets, this thing is insane, and it works really good. We're going to go back into it in just one second. Um, titanium bolster lock with the... The copper carbon fiber looks beautiful. Plays with the light really good. I love the edges. Um, just a damn good looking knife. Titanium milled pocket clip and full backspacer. And the access to the lock bar is good because they knocked it back right here. And they, they put a very comfortable place for you to disengage the lock bar. Super duper smooth. And it is a front flipper. Now the front flipper works good. At first I thought it was a little bit of a stiffer detent, but that broke in really quick and I do enjoy the front flipping action. The jimping isn't my favorite jimping, but it's sharper than the last one. So, you know, the last one we were talking about, so it works just good, works fine. Um, I like the front flipping action. Now the blade, because of the blade shape the way it is, you can easily do utility cuts and things like that. Like using it for EDC is great. Um, you can slice with it, but that's where the issue comes in. It is super thick. It's a robust blade, but the grind is where it's thick. If they would have made this a hollow, you know, there is, I can see where there would be an issue if they did what I'm about to say. So I, I do understand why they didn't do it. If they would have put a deep hollow on here, this tip would be super, super fragile. This thing is mega, mega pokey. So I do get it um, that they didn't, they wanted to add some stability. But the downfall is that it's not gonna be the best cutter. It is like an ax. Um, you know, yeah, you can put a low angle edge on it and that's going to massively improve the cutting performance, but it's never going to be a great slicer. But 
kind of like the um the Fenrir. It's somewhat of a tactical um or let me be clear, somewhat of a self defense style knife with the ability to to open things up and do good utility cuts and things like that. And it's fidgety. It looks good. It's fun, um, and it's kind of badass. It has the cool factor to it as well and even though it's a trailing clip point it actually still works good for edc because of the way it is shaped it just is very thick behind the edge it's about 25 thousandths directly behind the edge but as soon as you sharpen it it goes up to 30 thousand so that tells you how rapidly thick it gets let's talk about the next one now but the next one is the AM8 Havrog. This is a dowel blade shape in M390 steel with a titanium frame lock with micro milling that's really well done, really good micro milling. We have a little carbon fiber inlay right there. Um, but it's somewhat of a small to medium sized knife. Kind of reminds you of um, the buck, right? Or was it the, the dowel or they... they Drop, before drop turned into Caviso, they had the Dow and, and the Buck. It kind of looks like that a little bit. Um, front flipping action is good. Great, actually. Great front flipping action. Nice. It, the detent is a little bit on the stiffer side, but I think that's kind of a good thing because you do have the reverse flick, which it's perfect. The detent is perfect for the reverse flick and thumb flick. And it's just going to break in more and more. So... Yeah, the front flipper works good. The jimping, they put the, the sharp kind of jimping on there. They didn't wrap it all the way around, but in this case, right where they stopped, it still catches your finger, so no big deal at all. The grind is a little bit on the thicker side, but that, you know, it, it's... It's good. It's good. It gets down relatively thin behind the edge. And because, you know, the, the the stock thickness is a little stout, it allows the tip to have a little bit of stability in there, but still be a great utility cutter. It slices really good. It cuts really good. I haven't done a ton of cutting with it, but from what I have done, it cuts great. cuts just fine. The ergos are good. You know, it, it's a little slim, a little small in the hand, but it, it still has that enough thickness and depth or girth whatever that it fills the hand pretty good and you can always choke up now my issue which is a very little nitpick I, you know this is pretty you know all these are kind of dumb they are they are very little nitpicks and some of these i can fix myself including this one but the lock bar sharp not sharp cut you sharp but sharp annoying sharp right here this is not comfortable so that it's thin right here this gap they didn't cut this back so when you disengage it you're pushing on this edge that's that's sharp you know not sharp cut you sharp but annoying sharp you know um it just is the way it is but i can i could knock this back a little bit but I know a lot of people are thinking, like, I don't want to have to do that. So it is a thing, uh, but it's, and some people might not even care. It might not be that big of a deal. I mean, you can still easily disengage it. I'm not saying I don't slip off of it or anything like that. At least I haven't. Um, but it just, you know, it's a little sharp, a little annoying. And it, it's, to me, I think it's just something that's so easily fixed. You know, they could have just knocked this back a little bit so you can go right from the side good action um it would have made it feel a lot more comfortable or just not make this edge sharp but it's still a badass knife and i still like it a lot like a lot like a lot and to a lot of people these little details don't even matter and the reason why they don't matter is because they're like man i just take five minutes with my dremel and fix that you know or take you know 10 minutes with my dremel and make it however i want so and i get that Next, this one, there's nothing wrong with it. I just, <laughs> nothing wrong with this I just want to show you guys. My Kapara. I absolutely love the Spyderco Kapara. And now mine has this Rips Garage Scales and Backspacer. Micarta Scales, really, really good quality Micarta. And I'm curious what you guys think. Do you guys think it looks better with the, the, the Micarta or... 
the carbon fiber scales because this is, and it had the red backspacer before, but this is what it looked like before. And now, I love it. This is a knife that I think is one of the best EDC knives you can get. I really truly think that, um, especially from Spyderco. Spyderco has a lot of great EDC knives, but the Caparo is just one that stands out. It is one, the whole placement's great. Great action, reverse flick or thumb flick. It has the compression lock, so it's stupid smooth. The slow roll is actually enjoyable. You have these amazing ergos. To me, I think this is extremely, extremely comfortable. I can push a lot of pressure right now without any fatigue. And then if I really need to bear down, I can get a bright tight to the edge and really bear down. Even in a reverse grip, it's great. Pinch grips are good. The blade shape's perfect for opening things up and slicing. And then even if you need to use it a little bit in the kitchen, that's kind of what it's made for. It's made to be a versatile EDC knife that can be used if to, to prep food and for regular EDC. And I think they knocked it out of the park, um, considering. The clip works great. Um, just, yeah, badass knife. Let me know what you guys think about the Kapara down in the comments. Next, it's a beast <laughs> this is the best tech fairchild and it is a combo design and it is absolutely amazing i absolutely love this knife it's such a beast but it's also done so good it's so good the reverse flick is amazing you can thumb flick it as well but the, the reverse flick is where it's at but yes, you can easily thumb flick it because this hole is so big. You have a great push off point. Very easy to reverse, or sorry, to thumb flick. And then the reverse flick, like I said, perfect. The detent is perfect for it. The placement of the hole, the size of the hole, it, you know, the access to the lock bar is great. The drop is great. The ergonomics are, it's a beast. You know, so the, the ergonomics are great. You can get up nice and close to that edge to bear down. Even in a reverse grip, you'll be good. Pinch grips are fine, but it is big. It is a large knife. So it's not going to be everybody's cup of tea being this big. Now, if you are somebody who loves XL size knives, then this might be right up your alley. And I did talk to the designer. They are talking, they are going to be doing smaller versions of this. And I can't wait. Something, um, I'm not sure exactly how it's going to be, but personally, I think if it's somewhere between, you know, about 3.5 inch blade, 3.25 to 3.5 inch blade, I think it'll be so good. Um, because this one is just a little bit too big for me to recommend to most people, you know, but I would, I would recommend this if it was a couple inches smaller, but you know, you can see how much handle I have hanging out, you know, from, forward and back you know i can grip just right here but it's very comfortable up here um but yeah just a knife i absolutely love i just it's just man it's hard to recommend a knife that's like nine inches long um and speaking of nine inches long this is one i actually can recommend <laughs> that's very big let's look at the difference between the two this is the the migron valona the new one with 14c28n so they're relatively the same length but this is bigger so this feels a lot smaller than it is this is it feels bigger than it is um this is a beast which they're both the same length but this one because it's slimmer because it's G10 and a liner lock, it's it's lighter. Um, the blade is more narrow, but what a great knife. The flipping action's amazing. The reverse flick is really, really good. It does have 14C 28M blade steel on this one. They switched it from the DC 53 steel. Uh, but yeah, this one is, it, it's just a good all around large knife, but it doesn't feel as large as it is. I mean, you can carry it like a smaller knife and a lot of people, they don't, I don't think they realize until they get it, like how big this knife is. It's a big knife, uh, but it's a versatile knife though. You know, you can use it for so many different tasks. It has that simplistic blade shape or sorry, simplistic style and shape that makes it just good for everything. 
Um, and the action's really good. The fit and finish is good. Lock up rock solid. You know, they did a good job on this knife. Now, the only problem I have with it is the damn choil. We got to get plunge grinds right. This it doesn't even make sense to me because I'm deaf. This edge is not very sharp. Like from the factory, to me, the edges could be better from Migron. Um, I've seen some of them get better. So let me let me be clear. They have improved it. Um, but this one is one that, that has not been improved and it's not very sharp. Um, and so I'm going to want to lay back my edge, right? I'm going to want to lay back my edge. Well, I don't want to hit the plunge grind, which I will. I absolutely will. So here's another example of, you know, the knife we were talking about earlier. You see how I hit it right there and made a little smile where I hit the plunge grind. Now, this is a black blade, so it's really going to stand out. Um, and it happened on my other one, but... It doesn't stop me from liking the knife. You know, it's just a thing, you know, a nitpick. I wish they would, uh, you know, address things like that. But there you guys go. I'd love to hear down in the comments um, some knives that you guys love, but there's just a little tiny detail that you wish was a little different. You know, you still love the knife, but, you know, you just wish this one little detail was a little different. Um, I feel like that happens with a lot of knives, like probably the majority. But... Some make it to where it's difficult to look past, but a lot of them, you know, it's easy to look past. You know, like the ones in this video. I love you guys. Thank you guys for watching. Peace.